Welcome to the underground, you rebel scum. This is the American Expat, and today I am braving 95 degree weather to share with you this Minolta MD Rocker 50mm f1.4 Nifty 50 lens. And then, after going over stuff about this lens, I'm going to combine it with my Sony a7 IV of modern vintage, take it out into the field, which we're already kind of in the field, and take photos with it to see how it performs on a modern mirrorless camera. A uh, modern mirrorless full-frame camera in this instance. So, let's grab a cup of coffee and see what this thing is all about. How did I get that out here? Well, it, it doesn't matter. Anyway, I've got this, uh, again, MD Rocker 50mm f1.4 Nifty 50 or Fast 50 lens. It's a pretty solid, hefty little thing for the size. I mean, after having handled so many modern day lenses, it's really incredible how sturdy and heavy they are and how small they are. I mean, I guess when you take all the electronics out of the stuff, it, uh, well, they didn't take it out. We put it in. You, you know what I mean. But anyway, very solid camera lens. I mean, it has to be to have lasted nearly 50 years at this point. Um, the lens itself was released, of course, by Minolta. Back in 1977, we're talking Star Wars time period, the original Star Wars, not all those other movies and more recent movies. But uh, 1977, A New Hope, Star Wars Episode 3? No, 4. Episode 4. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, it uh, was released to replace another 50mm f1.4 lens that Minolta had, the Rocker PG 50mm f1.4, that was slightly bigger, I guess, and heavier. Very, very slightly. But anyway, this one is the one that I've gotten. It, you know, every lens has a story to it, and so does this one. You know, most of the stuff that I've got, I have no idea what the story is. I'm sure they have a story, it's just the people that I purchased them from are sometimes questionable people on Facebook Marketplace that probably don't know where it came from. But in this case, this lens came from an older gentleman who had had it uh, sitting in a closet for the better part of 25 years. He was the original purchaser of the camera. I believe this lens came with it as part of the, you know, the kit, you know, a lot of them back then came with these nifty 50 or fast 50 lens kit things with my Minolta SRT MC2, my usual go-to camera. And, uh, well, now it's come to me, and it's time to try it out on something other than film, in this case, my Sony a7 IV. So now that we know about this, uh, this lens that is actually very highly rated on the internet, people seem to love these things. They say they, they have beautiful images that they produce. This one's in excellent shape. I, uh, I actually attribute that to the fact that the thing was sitting in a, like, a leatherette case for all that time. The, the leatherette case disintegrated, but the camera and the lens are in excellent shape. I'm gonna be coupling it to my camera with this K and K and F concept adapter, which uh, they, they're not a sponsor, but I just so you know what I'm using. I purchased it on Amazon. I'm pretty sure that they're available there. So if you're looking for one, this one seems to work. It worked before with the 35 millimeter lens that we put on the a7 IV in the last video. There's a car going by and construction in the distance, so you're probably hearing that. But anyway, without further delay, let's put these things together and go see how it does. All right, so the first photos, of course, are going to be right here in the forest. And already, I have to say, I'm impressed with the colors and things that are coming out of this, this old lens. I'm not saying these are the most artistic photos in the world, but look at the colors. Look at the way it's rendering everything. Absolutely beautiful. So maybe there is something to this vintage glass. Now for this next part, we're driving into our favorite Coonskin Park. There's a trail I want to go down and take some photos on. That is, uh, it's my understanding, or what I've been told by others, is that its very existence is threatened. So in the future, we may not be able to access this, uh, the Alice Knight Memorial Trail, because they're planning on expanding the runways at the airport, and that would mean well, no more access. And you'll see, this is very beautiful back in here. I, I have to say, again, very unfortunate if this uh, this trail is no longer accessible in the future, but uh, we'll, we'll document it anyway. Look at that. Look at the colors that come out of this, this lens. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, I will say, when you record with log, don't use this lens to record with log. 
it ends up looking terrible for some reason. But if you turn all that off, turn all the pr picture profiles, I'm talking Sony language here, picture profiles off, you get results like what you're seeing here. At least I'm impressed with the colors. Beautiful stuff. I, I Again, I didn't mess with the colors too much. This is what it was producing on its own without any magic stuff happening in the camera. Raw photos, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Again, it's going to be really sad if this trail is no longer accessible in the future, but just look at those images. Now, this, these silk blossoms. I love this image. I don't know what other people think of it, but there you go. Beautiful photos. Man, we're back. Kind of. We're, we're back to the, the forest, the Kanawha State Forest. Well, what did you think? How did it perform? I thought that it, it did indeed produce incredible images. I mean, I, I, uh, I really loved the way the bokeh looked in the background of some of the shots at the colors that come out are really nice. I've heard they have a little bit warmer tones to them, which seems to uh, be true. It definitely was true when we did the 35 millimeter lens, the older one from Minolta. This one does the same, but maybe a little bit less so, more, more pleasing to the eye, less to try and fix afterward. But yeah, beautiful images, absolutely uh, a great lens. Of course, again, there's no stabilization. You probably noticed that when I was doing some of the video for the other part of this that was kind of shaky. Um, there is no stabilization. If you're going to use something like that and you're gonna try and do video, probably have it on a tripod or get yourself a gimbal or something to kind of stabilize things a little bit. But um, yeah, beautiful results, I thought. You'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. Um, good lens, bad lens, good idea, bad idea. I, uh, I think it was good. And I'll leave it at that. I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. ไฟพวงหลงเฝ้าสาวเจ้าบางประคงหางไว้งงหลงเกิดเธอหาโอ้ยคำจำพระกาไปไกลตา